What's up guys, Jordan here with Objective C Tutorials Lesson 28 Part 1, Setting Up for the Switch Statement. And in this lesson, we actually won't be coding the switch statement. Like the name of the lesson says, we'll just be setting up for it. And then in Part 2, we'll actually be coding the switch statement. Now, uh, to start off this lesson, let's go over some of the problems with our program right now. Now, in previous lessons, we only used an array for one of the transaction types. That was spend dollars. Now, if we wanted to extend this functionality to each transaction type for every country, we need to create a new array for each transaction type for every country. Now, you can see this would get very messy and way too many lines of code. Uh, when we start adding more and more countries to our program and possibly new uh, transaction types as well. Now, what we really need is just a single array that can hold the different transaction types for all the countries. And that's what we'll be working on in this lesson and in future lessons. Now, what are some of the solutions? Well, in future lessons, we'll be using object-oriented features such as inheritance and polymorphism. And I'll get into both of those in future lessons. But in this lesson, it'll be more of a quick fix solution. We'll be using a switch statement. And we'll still need an array for each country, but we'll be able to store both charge and credit transactions in one array. And we'll also change uh, the transaction object from a wrapper to a real object. And what I mean by real object is one with IVARs and methods. And you may be saying, well, what's a wrapper? Um, no, I'm not talking about Eminem or somebody that wraps presents at Christmas time. Yes, those are wrappers. But uh, when I say wrapper here, I'm meaning an object that is mainly used to change something into an object. And NS number is a great example of this. NS number just changes a regular number. So let's say 14 into an object. So basically NS number it's just uh, putting the number 14 into a box that says this is an object and then the program looks at it and says, oh, look, that's an object. But it's really not truly an object in the respect of it doesn't have IVARs and methods, but the program still looks at it um, as an object. Now, some of the specifics about the coding in this lesson. Uh, we've already learned in previous lessons everything that we need to know to code the transaction class. That's what we'll be doing in part one. And in part two of this lesson, I'll cover the switch statement. Um, but in this lesson, or in this part of uh, lesson 28, we'll just be setting up for the switch statement. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into Xcode and code up the transaction class. Okay, so here we are in Xcode and we'll be working with the same program that we've been working with for the past, I don't know how many ever lessons. But before we actually get into coding the transaction class, we can actually clean up the code a little bit. We've been testing out some different things and we can go ahead and delete them. So this NS log here, that was just test something out and then the C array, that was test something out. You can delete those. Then down here, all the arrays and arrays stuff that we practiced last lesson, you can delete that. So that cleans up the main function quite a bit. So you can go ahead and save that. Then select the classes folder because this is where this new transaction class will go. Then go up to Xcode menu bar, go to file, new file, and then under Mac OS X. Um, select Cocoa class, then Objective-C class, make sure it's the subclass of NS object, then hit next, then name it transaction.m, then have uh, check the box that says also create transaction.h, make sure that's in the right location, then finish. Now it'll create this new class and then go into transaction.h. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, use something called a type def. And we went over type defs and enumerations in lesson 11, uh, part 2. So if you're a little shady on that, don't really remember what all they are, make sure and go ahead and uh, look over that lesson right now and then come back to this one. But um, if you do know what they are, continue with the lesson. So uh, first, type def. And remember that this creates a new type. So... Um, instead of saying like int or whatever, you can say your own little uh, data type. So type def and then enumeration. So then we're going to be creating some variables and these variables, cash and charge, they're both integers automatically because it's an enumeration. And then the name of this new type will be transaction type. So now we can jump inside the interface and, uh, 
we're now going to be declaring our first Ivar type, and it's going to be of uh, it's going to be of the type transaction type. And then uh, we can create a double, call it amount. So, and then we're going to create some methods. So void create transaction, and remember, create transaction is just the name of the method. And the argument it's going to be a double the uh, amount. Then of type is another part of the name, so this will be void create transaction of type. That's the name of the method. And then the argument the uh, the type will be transaction type a type. Then this will be of type double return amount. Then this will be of type transaction type return type. So we're all done coding up the interface. Um, just remember whenever we're saying transaction type, it's really like we're saying int cache and int charge. So anyways, now we can jump into .m. We'll make sure you go ahead and save that. Oh, whoops. Got to have uh, your cursor in uh, the code to save. Anyways, then go into .m. Now, all right, so the first thing we can do is void create transaction and that whole thing automatically pops out there for us and then type equals a type and amount equals or really is the amount so um, now we're just assigning the values the IVARs we're assigning them to the arguments. That's all we're doing right here. Then down here with double return amount. Really simple, return amount. And that's the IVAR amount. Then this one, transaction type return type very simple again you just return type and then close that out go ahead and save and if you build and run it'll take a little while and then as you can see there's no new results it looks a little bit different just because it's smaller because we deleted all that extra stuff that we don't need anymore but there's actually no new functionality that we added in the program just uh, the transaction class, but like I said, we didn't implement any new functionality. We'll be doing all that in part two of this lesson using the switch statement. So be on lookout for that coming up next weekend and uh, follow me on Twitter and Facebook to be notified when that comes out. Leave any questions that you may have or just comments in the comments section below. Uh, like this video if you liked it, of course, and subscribe for more great videos like these and to be updated when I upload a new one. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video real soon.